happen. Before we start, let's ask for divine blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Divine Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, personally to my teacher, Master Tohok Sri Maha Guji we humbly invoke for divine light, divine love, divine guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. We thank you in full faith, so be it. Okay, so a lot of you join us this morning, and a lot of you haven't, you know, because of work and whatever reason. And we talk a little bit about the tree of life. And just to kind of introduce it to you, this is the book I've mentioned a few times before, and The Chakras and the Inverted Tree of Life. It's written by my teacher, and, you know, you have the, the tree of life here, which is in many traditions. This is the Jewish tradition. Uh, this, interestingly enough, the Egyptian tradition is almost the same. And you have also the... Assyrian tradition, not Syria, Assyrian. And you have the Hindu tradition. So every spiritual tradition have their tree of life. You know, when you talk about tree of life, you talk about a connection, right? You have a spiritual connection. And the interesting thing is this is called the chakras and the inverted tree of life. Well, if you normally look at a tree, the roots are down on the earth, right? The reason he called it the inverted tree of life, because in the Bhagavad Gita, in the in the scriptures, it talks about an eternal tree that is rooted in the clouds or rooted in heaven. So if you think about it, normally a tree is <laughs> rooted down, but this particular tree is re rooted upwards. And as far as you and I are concerned, <clears throat> we are rooted into heaven. In other words, that's where we came from, from the spiritual world. That's one perspective. The other perspective, I think, which is very, very important, is you will notice that the more you do your spiritual work, you seem to have slightly different perception of the world initially. Then at some point, it, it starts changing. And at some point, you also notice that, hey, how come people don't, don't understand me? I'm not that weird. <laughs> it's just your perception is different. So let me explain it in a more uh, everyday manner. So if I'm standing here, and you're standing there, and we look at each other, we're looking at it from the perspective that is the ground, that is the sky. Yes? Mm. Now, if somebody grabbed you and held you upside down, would your perception of the ground and the sky be different? In other words, what's up and what's down? Of course. Because if somebody held you upside down, what I would perceive as down and vice versa. So that gives you an idea why ordinary people who are not yet very serious about their spiritual path, their connection is more to the ground than to the heavens. And a lot of you joined me in the Achieving Oneness class. We talk about the spiritual cord. The spiritual cord is a pipeline that comes down to the crown. And that's why you notice a lot of saints, when they're drawn or painted, you see a, you see a shaft of light on top of the head. Well, guess what? The good news is all of us have it, because that's we in you know, carne is meat in Spanish, right? How we're incarnate. In other words, that's you go from subtle into material world this way, okay? Now, this spiritual cord on top of your head doesn't stop there. From your, from your head, it goes through your body, and that's what, there are many names for it. One of them is called the central channel, or if you study yoga, it's called shushumna. That shushumna basically is when the spiritual cord comes in like this, like a from there, that spiritual energy or soul force is what gives the chakras the ability to draw energy. In other words, the divine energy comes down, that spiritual energy coming down is from the higher soul. And if you remember, I've repeated several times, the soul is called Atma in Sanskrit, Alma in Spanish. In Italian, it's called Anima, where the word animate comes from. So it is the animating factor. And in the Bhagavad Gita, you know, Lord Krishna told Arjuna, the Atma, or the soul, cannot be destroyed or killed. It is immortal. So just imagine that immortal force coming down your crown as it goes through the center of your body. You know, uh, I have a picture here. Anyway, it goes into the center of your body and goes to the chakras. You have the chakras in the front, chakras in the back. And then from there, reaches the bottom of your spine area and continues downward. So your spiritual connection, your spiritual cord is actually not just a cord, it's a continuous pipeline. Top of the head, to the body, and down to the earth. So the way Master Chu explained it to me, uh, to us, is as simple as this. That's the spiritual cord, 
That's the central channel in the middle, and that's the earth cord. All right? Now, what is the implication of that statement? The speech cord determines your speechfulness, <laughs> or, or it determines your level of spiritual connection. Uh, how spiritual you are when you meditate, do you have a deep, do you have a, a sense of deep inner peace? Do you have your uh, perception of life looking from top view, as in looking at it from the spiritual view? That's the spiritual cord. The one below, from your pelvic floor, basic chakra area, and your base of your spine going down to the earth, that's called the determines your earth connection. In plain English, your ability to make money, your ability to survive. So just by using energy, by scanning or feeling that pipeline, the width of that pipeline on top, the pipeline below, you can tell if a person is very spiritual or very materialistic. Now, some people, it's like this. They're huge on top. They're very spiritual, very loving, very gentle. By the time you check the bottom, you go, are you having problems financially? And guess what? They're dead broke. So they're very loving, very spiritual, but dead broke, right? Okay. Then you have some people, they're huge at the bottom. They're very, very uh, uh, successful. They have money. They have fame. They have a lot of, uh, what do you call this, accumulated stuff in life. But when you talk to them, hey, yeah, yeah, whatever. When you talk to them, when there's nobody watching, you know, they're depressed. There's no inner peace. There's no love in their heart. It's just like they've amassed a lot of stuff materially or that their focus is. But since there's minimal spiritual connection, there's no peace, love, you know, stillness, none of that stuff because that belongs on the upper cord. Make sense? Now, the mistake a lot of people make is they say, oh, you have to choose one or the other. The way my teacher explained it is, in reality, you want both to be big. So you have spiritual, uh, spiritual energy coming in, right? You have uh, a strong connection with God, strong connection with others. You want to be helpful. And the lower court allows you to what? To have the resources to manifest that goodness within you. And, you know, when I was new in spiritual teachings, I used to have this guilt issue where, oh, I don't know, when, when I make so much money, I might not be spiritual anymore. And so I'm sharing this with you because one of the things that people on the speech path struggle with is they want to be successful. Their mouth says, and I watch this on Instagram and, and Facebook, oh yeah, you know, a, a lot of money is coming into my life. I'm being blessed with this. I'm a kajillionaire. I mean, that, that's great. Good affirmation. But you can send some of these people that are making these affirmations, I should read some of their comments, you know, these guys are in financial problem, right? So the question is, how do the two work together? See, their mouth says they want to be prosperous, but there's so much old programming of unworthiness, so much old programming of what? Stories of the poor guy went to heaven, the rich guy is barbecuing in hell. So a lot of these thoughts and emotions are actually sitting in the aura and the chakras. So if you've been repeating to all of you, it's a simple concept of big fish eat small fish. In other words, the affirmations you make, the visualizations, the picturing that you make, that you want to be successful, that's all great. Go for it. But without cleaning house, all the thought from sitting in your aura, if you don't clean it out, what happens is, oh, yeah, man, you know, like this one, nobody's watching. You go, <laughs> okay? In fact, I know a number of people, unfortunately, that um, claim to be very prosperity-minded, but they come to me quietly and ask for help because they should externally, but internally, they're not. Of course, I don't say who they are, but I'm just giving you an idea that without cleaning out the old programming, what will happen is you claim to be, want to be successful, but once things start moving, that guilt comes up, the old pro uh, programming comes to the surface, and guess what? Self-sabotage. Sounds familiar? That's what happens. So without disintegrating a lot of those thoughts and emotions, you know, there, of course, there's many ways to do it. If you don't clear those out, I'm pointing you to the back. It's not in the city, just in back. It's in different chakras. But if you don't clear it out, what happens is this. Your basic chakra, the base of your spine, is connected to money, right? Your ability to produce result. So what happens is your upper cord is big, 
right? Your lower cord is kind of small because it's kind of stuck there. And the reason it's stuck because there are blockages of uh, poverty consciousness inside. So verbally, the person says, yeah, I want to all that stuff. But the stuff of doubt and, you know, old programming, trauma, whatever, it's in the basic chakra, right? Lower centers. But somehow, by sheer will, they want to do it. They want to move ahead, so they start embarking on prosperity projects. You know, they work harder, uh, they want to have start a new business, you know, they cultivate the, the connection with very prosperous people. So things are finally moving. Here's the interesting part. When things start to, start to move and prosperity is coming to a person's life, that chakra will be forced to spin a little faster, or by sheer will. So it starts spinning a little faster. As that starts spinning faster, guess what? It loosens up inside. So that's good, right? That's great. Then as the chakra spins faster, I don't know if you can picture it, it's just like a propeller, more energy comes in. So as more energy comes in, the chakra gets stronger. So that means whatever is inside, good or bad, start getting energized. Look, when you pour fertilizer, not just the flowers and the fruits grow, so do the weeds. That's why the person, yeah, I feel, you know, I have more prosperity energy. But the self-doubt also increases. Does that make sense? So if a person does not have a realization that, hey, I have prosperous thoughts, I also have some worries and cares and concerns that I've never told anyone. Like, what's going to happen when I finally am financially independent or, you know, I, when I finally have this freedom to do what I want? Then what? I, I worry about that stuff because it might corrupt me. You know, things like that. Some of you know what I'm talking about. I used to go do, have that happen. So when we don't own up to it and learn how to get rid of it, guess what happens? Sure, things are moving forward, and then those old programming come to the surface, and then what do we do? Uh, then we move forward again. Have uh, you notice? Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're good people, but the problem is even a good person has a lot of old thoughts and emotions that could pull them back. And the good news is, step number one, by simply understanding money is not your enemy. Money is good. Money is a tool to improve my life and the lives of others. So if you have the understanding, okay, so that means if I understand this is a tool, just like if I realize this pen is something I use, so therefore it is implied use it, I control it, not the other way around. Now, a lot of people, they don't have that simple understanding. That's why they look at money, I don't know, you know, all these corrupt people about money. That's because the money controls them. When you have the clear understanding, look, I am a being of light, everything in this world is created outside of me. So therefore, anything that's here I can utilize, so I control it, not the other way around. So that's the first part, understanding. Without affirmations you make, those affirmations will be gobbled up by self-doubt. You go, okay, okay, okay. You have to be congruent. That makes sense. So that when you have that understanding, when these doubts come to the surface, you recognize it. Because without that understanding, guess what happens? You do not get to be the observer. Haven't you noticed when certain negative emotions and doubt come to the surface, all common sense goes out the window? Because what happens, you cannot pull yourself out of it anymore and observe. The minute you can pull out and observe, then you start to realize, hey, these thoughts I used to have how many years ago when I was having difficult time with that business, that does not apply to me anymore. So by sheer understanding, these thoughts and emotions in the aura loosens up. So the next step is how to flush it out. So when you do meditation, there are many types of meditation with the intention of moving these thoughts and emotions. In fact, uh, it was not the plan today, but somehow before we started, I go, okay, what should I talk to these people about? I don't want to get them to get bored to death. I thought, oh, money's good. <laughs> That's why this came up. Now, of course, when it comes to money and prosperity and uh, financial stuff, 
in, with the pandemic and all that stuff, there are people out there who lost their jobs, are having financial difficulty. So in addition to the basic chakra being affected, the soul plexus is also being affected. Meditation today, let's go ahead and work on both and flush both the self-doubt about finances and abundance and prosperity out, as well as any type of stress and negative emotion that could be building up from, I don't know, being cooped up or doubt of uncertain, any doubts about your, your future. Yeah, it's just one hose, just pour it on there, okay? So that's what we're going to do. Now, in a little more. When it comes to this anger and stress, I don't know what the heck I, I, was, I got into that uh, basic chakra. Okay, let me finish that topic first. So you have the spiritual coin coming down. That's a pipeline on top. It goes through your body. As the energy goes through your body, just imagine you have this spiritual pipeline of light going down through your cent you know, center of your body. So if this is the pipeline, I wish I have that picture. I don't have it. I'll bring it. I'll show you next time. It's like this. And then just imagine this is the stem and you have stalks of flowers going like that. Those are the chakras, all right? So as long as that spiritual energy is coming down and feeding these chakras, these chakras can absorb life force or prana, which will keep the body alive and healthy. And then of course, as the energy goes down here, goes out there, it also continues down to the ground, so it uh, plants you to the ground. So it serves many purposes. The spiritual energy is able to feed the aura and the chakras, keep your body alive, as well as keep you alive in the, in the physical world, and also help you function, uh, not only in survival mode, but also be prosperous. So what you want is you want to be big on top, you also want to be big at the bottom, so you're very spiritual, very loving. At the same time, you can produce result. Now, the middle portion will take care of itself because the inside, if this is strong, this is strong, the energy will start flowing, spin faster. Okay? Now, here's the interesting part. <clears throat> Each of these chakras, if, as a lot of you have joined me before, have physical functions. I seen these energy centers feed the physical body. A lot of them also feed certain psychological functions. For example, your basic chakra controls your bones, muscles, blood, body temperature, and cell repair. It also gives you the ability to make money and survive. Just like your heart has the ability to love, show compassion and mercy, that same energy that feeds your thymus gland, your heart, your circulatory, as well as your respiratory system. Make sense? Now, when you get stressed and angry, upset, whatever, the first part where it's generated in your solar plexus, it's a soft spot below your sternum, front and back. And what people don't realize is, you notice when you get stressed, you hold your breath, and people say, breathe. Because when you hold your breath, that's basically a manifestation of your solar plexus instead of going spinning, it starts start going like this and kind of uh, 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 like that. So the solar plexus chakra feeds energy to your diaphragm. So that's the first part. The second part, so this is lower emotion, the heart is higher emotion. So if you want to get rid of this stress in the front and back solar plexus, by the way, front solar plexus is, um, what do you call this, uh, present emotions, like when you're angry, stressed, it builds up here. When you suppress or repress it, it goes to the back. So front solar plexus is expressed emotion, back solar plexus is suppressed and repressed emotion. So when these two get clogged up, the front channel, the energy cannot come through, go through, so do the back channels. Now the question is, that's nice and great, <clears throat> what the heck am I going to supposed to do with it? All right. There are several ways to get rid of all these negative thoughts and negative emotions. One is the direct approach. In other words, in pranic healing, we use our hands, we use a certain color like either white, green, or violet, and we simply remove it. That's called sweeping. That's one way. Another way is transforming the state of those energies from lower energies to higher energies. To be more specific, from lower emotions to higher emotions. So the way you do it is you put your attention in your solar plexus, your stress out of your mind. Now, instead of saying, I want to get rid of this crap, it's bothering me, you don't. You put your attention in your heart, compassion to people you that are around you, as you keep putting your attention on love, the heart chakra gets so big with so much love and compassion, you don't have to worry about the one below it, the heart chakra will instantly pull those lower emotions and transform it from low to high. It's a form of emotional alchemy. 
That's one way. No, the second way. First is cleansing. Second way is what? Transmuting from lower emotion to higher emotion. By the way, that's what we do when you do meditation to hearts. Do you notice in meditation to hearts? We don't say, oh, don't think of that anger anymore. No. Be aware of your heart. Imagine the people you love. Flood them with loving energy. Bless the earth with love, with peace. So as you keep putting your intention on love, the heart just goes. <clears throat> you don't have to worry about <laughs> all that energy below because the heart chakra is taking care of it. In fact, some of you notice, you could be stressed out of your mind and halfway through the meditation, you're like this. <sighs> Haven't you noticed that? So what the heck is that? <sighs> when you go <sighs> like this, that's because your soul plexus that was full of stress energy suddenly went like this. <sniffs> like that. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> okay? So when you do that meditation, you should tell people, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So some of it goes out, some of it, the heart chakra literally pulls up and transforms it from anger to love. Okay, so that's the second thing. One is cleansing, one is transmuting emotionally. Then from there, you use a different approach. This is almost like a pattern interrupt, okay? So a lot of you have been at Tori Robbins event, uh, he's has business mastery, by the way, and uh, I'm sorry I have to kind of cut away because this is part of my responsibility. <clears throat> the other way is simply changing from emotional energy to mental energy. What the heck is that? Okay, it's as simple as this. Do you notice that when you're talking to somebody who's emotionally upset, no matter how much you explain something to them at that time, you know, let's say you're talking to your child, they're emotionally upset because, I don't know, their friends don't talk to them. You go, honey, but look, you know, blah, blah, blah. You start explaining, you go, oh, I don't care. Have you been there before? When somebody's emotionally upset, logic doesn't, make, doesn't do anything. Zero, zilch. Yeah? That's why when you're trying to explain something that makes sense to somebody who's emotionally upset, mentally they absorb it, they know it, but until they move the energy from emotions to thoughts, it's a complete waste of time. Now, the question is, then what? Then the solution is what we cover, what he covers in this class or in this book, which is learning. I think I talked about this about a month ago. Your three willpowers, your three will centers. Soul plexus is emotional will, right? Emotions. The ajna in between your eyebrows, which most people mistakenly, I emphasize the word mistakenly, call the third eye because the real third eye is up here, okay? But it's okay. When people, I'm talking to people who have not, who are not in this arena, I just, in this arena, my third eye, I go, okay. By the way, do you know why they call it third eye? Because number one, they, didn't, they work with only seven centers. They don't know there's one up here. The other one is they do math. One, two, oops, that must be three. Okay, but in reality, this is the real third eye up here. That's why when you're trying to see something energetically, you don't go like this. Some of you start going, right? Like, you're going, what's, going, what's wrong with this person? Like, they're falling asleep. They're going to a trance. No, because this is the, the real third eye. Anyway, emotional center, will center, intelligent, intelligent or mental will center, spiritual will center. Emotional will, intelligent will, divine will, or the will to do good, all right? So the secret is moving that stress and anger energy from here to here, from here to here. And if you remember this morning, I know I'm, I'm throwing a lot of it at you because I always assume that you guys are geniuses. <laughs> and besides, you can rewind this. Okay. The tree of life as we know it, basically it's your entire chakra system, okay? Now, this Tree of Life chakra system is made of certain frequencies and energies, and there's a way to tap into it like a key and turn it on and access its powers or energies, for lack of a better way of explaining it. But if you say power, it's a little more, ooh, okay. It's essentially tapping its potential. And the way you tap its potential, there are many, many ways to breathing, meditation, or you can use a password phrase. And that password phrase, <laughs> all put together, is what you call the Lord's Prayer. And that's what's taught in this book and also in the class. Because people think, Lord's Prayer, hmm, are you talking about the Our Father? Yes. Each line of the Lord's Prayer has a specific frequency and energy that is also key to unlock these chakras, okay? So to get to the point, 
the soul plexus center, the line is, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Remember, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it's in heaven, give us their daily bread. It keeps going. If you think about it, if you were to stand, the soul plexus is the middle line. Soul plexus here, above is love, knowledge, uh, intelligence, wisdom, spirituality. Below it, below the soul plexus is physical power, that's your navel. Sex chakra is procreation, sexuality. Basic chakra is what? Survival. So whenever there's a conflict within you, within us, of fighting between your higher and lower nature, one way the fight is happening is you're stuck in the soul plexus. Should I give in to things that are more survival mode or should I give in to something that is more giving and spiritual mode? So when you're stuck, at some point you, you turn this way, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to, and what do you do? You get on your knees, Lord God, help me, thy will be done. You know, when you give up, there's no other way to go. You go, okay, okay, I leave it to you. Have you had that experience? What happens is this, energetically, when you say thy will be done, the stress energy in the soul plexus is loosened up. You know, because it's, it's, it's not, it's like being on the fence. I want to go this way or this way. The fence is the solar plexus. So when you say that will be done, <laughs> you fold to the upper chakras. And what happens when you say it, the solar plexus triggers and opens. And that's why some of you, after you finish, okay, Lord God, I give up. I offer it to you. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> and you suddenly go like this. Ah, ooh, that feels better. And did you notice? Because what happened energetically, it went from here, thy will be done. The emotional will submitted to the mental will. And since prayer is involved, that mental will shifted to the spiritual will. Am I making sense to any of you? Now, the good news is this. You know, we're kind of short on time, so I'm just describing it to you. But in a future session, when we can, we'll guide you to the meditation. But today, we'll do a meditation to the hearts again. Really stretch your heart and use that loving uh, energy to transmute the stress energy in front and back soul plexus. In a future lesson, we'll use the power of transmuting from lower emotions, you know, uh, emotional energy, emotional will, to mental will, to spiritual will. And if you can't wait, <laughs> try to get a hold of the book. Okay, you just go to um, U.S. Panic Healing or you go to my website, masterco.org or panicheal.com, the bookstore. It's written by my teacher. Okay, and that class can be taught eeks, September 12, 12 and 13. That's next month. And it'll blow your mind. It should blow your mind because I talk it ago. Whoa, I didn't realize every center has its own energy, has its own tendencies, not personalities, its own frequency, and, uh, uh oh, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, anyway, each chakra, each energy center has a particular angelic being in charge of it. You go, whoa, you're getting really weird now. Take it or leave it, <laughs> all right? In other words, each energy center has a particular spiritual guardian that when you pray or meditate, they are in charge of keeping these chakras from exploding. That's why we always say, before you meditate, do spiritual work, ask for divine blessing. Even if you're an atheist, ask anyway, somebody will hear you. I remember many years ago, this is what happened. I promise, after this, we'll meditate, okay? Um, my teacher was teaching a class on stress relief. So it's available to the general public with or without uh, background in spirituality or energy. And I remember, I was sitting in the second or third row, this, you know, everybody's meditating, of course, I told you before, I'm the least sensitive one. Everybody's blazing out, I'm going, okay. So I'm doing meditation, sure enough, you know, be still, be aware, everybody's like peace and quiet, and yeah, I'm just gonna, my mind's going all over the place. I go, I figure I'll look around. What is it, what am I supposed to do? So I'm going, Then I saw Grand Master Cho start walking to the middle of the room to this lady and then just leaned over and whispered something. And I saw the woman's body kind of go, before she was kind of fidgety. That's weird. Okay, the whole thing is done. Everybody come back to your body, be still, uh, be still, be aware, the silence and come back to your body. Of course, you know what my mind says, I never left. 
<laughs> okay? Anyway, so I was listening. And then out of nowhere, he said, it is very important that when you do any form of spiritual work, always ask for divine blessing. You don't have to belong to any religion. Just ask for divine blessing and protection so you'll be protected. I go, what the heck does that mean? You know, for me, it's not a problem because I grew up Catholic, became Baptist, and started learning different traditions and so on. So, so for me, it's like, what's there to think about? Then she goes, all right. And she looked at that woman. And... Uh, she says, he said, how do you feel? Oh, the woman says, oh, I feel so much better. And so he decided to say, see, during the middle of the meditation, she was burning up. Not physically burning up, but it almost felt like she was burning up. So much energy was building up. She, some of you know what I'm talking about. I know what you can say, oh, but that's Kundalini. Hear me out. Then he goes, that's why I had to go over and whisper her to her, a whisper to her that she should ask for divine blessing. And the woman says, uh, he's right, because, and this is the woman talking. Uh, growing up, I think she, I forgot what country she was from. She goes, growing up, religion was being pushed down my throat. So I became atheist. I didn't believe in anything, but I'm interested in meditation and spirituality. That was the funny part. That's why last week, uh, a few days ago, we said, you know, you can be an atheist and still be spiritual. Because the perception of being connected to the energy world is already spiritual, Okay. So she goes, yeah, religions have been shoved down my throat, so I never ask for anything divine, whatever. I just want to meditate. And that's when Grandma Sacho explained. He goes, look, certain meditations generate so much energy, it stimulates your energy center so much. When you ask for divine blessing, okay, you guys, I know, I, I have no idea who you guys are. This too far out. If it's too far out, you never listen to me again. Oh, well. Okay? Two things. One, when so much energy goes in, the chakras get activated. So remember, there's a magnifying effect. There's a fertilizing effect. So the good and not so good get what? Get triggered. So when you ask for divine blessing, certain angelic beings in charge of those chakras, remember we talked about it a few minutes ago, they regulate it. So when you invoke, even though some, sometimes you feel like, oh, I can't handle it more. If you have somebody who could see energy, somehow light goes into the chakra and it to calm down. Those are the angelic beings that are helping us. So when you ask, they're more likely to help. That's number one. Number two, you learn this in the different classes that we teach. You have spiritual energy and you have kundalini energy, lower energies, whatever. So the spiritual energy is very, very important because when it comes in, when you stimulate all those energies in your body, as that energy rises, you need the spiritual energy to continue to control it. Without the spiritual force pouring from the bottom, this is like a wildfire. Okay? So when he said that, I go, it makes sense. And that's why we always tell people, look, you don't believe any religion, you don't pray, you don't do whatever, just ask anyway. Even if you say, uh, thank you for blessing, good enough. Because from there, there's already energy coming down. Of course, if you're very spiritual and you're very religious, as in you follow certain routines with the right attitude, then you have a waterfall of energy coming down, okay? But all that to just tell you, when you invoke for divine blessing, certain angelic beings regulate the spin of your chakras so you can have a smooth meditation. And those angelic beings, that's that, all right? Anyway, I think I said too much. Here's the best news of all. You don't un understand or believe a word I say. If you just simply follow the instructions in the meditation, you'll be fine, okay? Like I always say, if I'm cooking something, I might not know why I first boil water, put this in, put this ingredient in a certain syntax. But if I know how to follow the instructions of putting this and this and this and this, warming it to the right temperature, whatever, even if I don't believe in it, some food will come out. <laughs> Make sense? Of course, you take it one step further. Somebody who has the love, uh, they really want to serve others, they really want to create a lot of food to help others, then they impregnate the, the food with more loving energy. Of course, that's kind of raising the bar now, okay? All right, I know I said a lot, but um, just in case, if you're interested, you know, stay tuned, tell your friends, we'll, you know, as we do this, anchor, anchor the light meditations, we'll, we'll do our best to kind of include some of these things to kind of enrich your spiritual knowledge. Okay, let's meditate. To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, we humbly ask for your blessings. To all the spiritual teachers, spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers, 
Personally, to my teacher, Master Twakok Sui Mahaguji Mei Ling, we humbly invoke for divine light, divine love, divine guidance, divine healing energy, divine protection, and thank you for awaiting, awakening within us the yearning to serve others. We thank you in full faith, so be it. All right, you guys ready? We'll do meditation twin hearts and really, really stretch the heart, okay? So before we do that, follow me. Press the center of your palms. Go like this. Say my heart center. Okay, some of you are sensitive, some of you are not. You know, just go like this, see if you feel something in your heart. And then, if you like your crown also. The reason it's called twin hearts, this is your human heart, this is your spiritual heart. All right, put your hand like this. Close your eyes. So imagine the earth the size of a little ball in front of you. First, let's repeat, we are one. Our hearts are one, our crowns are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. We're one with God, we're one with all. There's only oneness. Now imagine all of us are inside the big bright sun, looking out into the entire solar system, and just put your awareness and attention on beautiful Mother Earth. Now be aware of your heart and your hands. Collectively, let's project a beautiful beam of pink light from the heart, from our hearts, coming out of the sun and flooding the entire earth. And we will use the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where does hatred anywhere in the world, let me sow love. Where does injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Bless every person, every being on earth with peace, with love, and the spirit of forgiveness. Bless your family, your friends, the people you know who are having conflicts. Awaken their love, open their hearts, let them be filled with peace, with love, and forgiveness. So be it. May all be blessed. So be it. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. To all who are suffering in any way, physically, financially, emotionally, even spiritually, may you be blessed with a new hope and faith that life will get better. So be it. Visualize their lives improving and bless them with hope and faith and a better tomorrow. So be it. If you know people who are sick right now, people who are in the hospital, either with an ailment, or you, have, you know people who have friends and loved ones who are sick, bless them with hope and with faith. Things will get better. So be it. If you have friends and loved ones who are caregivers, they are there with such a sacrificial heart, bless them with hope, with faith, with divine healing light and divine protection. Where there's darkness, let me sow light. And where there's sadness, let me sow joy. May every person, every being on earth be blessed with peace, with love, with the spirit of forgiveness and reconciliation with hope and faith, with light and lots of joy, so be it. So be it. Allow yourselves, all of us, as one unit, to be simply a pipeline for God's peace, love, forgiveness, hope and faith, light and joy to flow through and flood the earth with it. So be it. If you're sensitive, you might feel your hands tingling, you might feel your entire body almost shaking. Just let the energy flow through and things will come down. May all be blessed. So be it. So be it. Now be aware of your heart. Take a deep breath. Lift that loving energy up, up, up to the top of your head, to your crown and exhale. 
Just be aware of your crown. Just put your gentle attention on the top of your head. You might feel a gentle pressure, a tingling. That's just your crown expanding even more and being filled with so much golden light. Now let that golden light from your crown flow down through your hands and bless the entire earth. Bless your family, your friends, all your relatives, all the people you work with. May all of them be blessed. And let the golden light just spread throughout the city, the state, the country. Let the golden light spread throughout the earth. From the heart of God, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and kindness. Let all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. Our hearts are one, our crowns are one, and in this oneness we collectively project a massive amount of golden light from the sun to the entire earth. May all be blessed, so it is. From the heart of God, may every person, every being be blessed with love and kindness. See doing good, but actually doing it and serving others. So be it. May all be blessed. Now be aware of your heart, be aware of your crown. Simultaneously, take a deep breath. As you exhale, imagine golden light pouring out all our hands out of the sun, even brighter than before, just flooding the entire earth. See that brilliant golden light penetrate to the atmosphere, just filling every person, every animal, every being. Let it penetrate to the sea, the land, and into the earth's crust. Saturate the earth with golden light. Our hearts are one, our crowns are one, our souls and spirits are one. There's only oneness. And in this oneness, we bless Mother Earth. From the center of the heart of God, through our soul to our entire being, may every person, every being on Earth, in the higher worlds, the middle worlds, even the lower worlds, let all beings in every dimension, without exception, be blessed with unconditional love and kindness. Let all be blessed with inner peace inner healing for many physical and financial healing let all be blessed with understanding with harmony with goodwill and especially the willingness to do good so be it so be it from the center of the heart of god through my entire being, may all be blessed with unconditional love and kindness. Let there be peace. Let there be physical, emotional, mental, and even financial healing for all. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Continue blessing the earth with beautiful golden light. May all be blessed. You and I are just the channels and the pipelines, the conduits. Allow every cell, every particle of your being to be a transparent pipeline to let the blessings flow through. So be it. It's a form of complete selfless service for our planet, to all our spiritual brothers and sisters. So it is. Just let it flow. If you know any areas in the world that need a blessing, focus your attention there. Here in Southern California, we're focusing on the areas that are being affected by fires. May all the nature spirits of fire be blessed with peace, with love, with kindness. So be it. Let the fires be all extinguished now. So be it. There are many places in the world there's political unrest. 
May all their hearts, their mind, their souls be blessed with peace, with love, and divine order. So be. So be it. There's so many who are still sick, and there's so many people still sacrificing their time, their health in serving and helping others. May all of them be flooded with divine healing light and divine protection, so be it. May all be blessed. Just imagine this brilliant golden light from the sun just flooding the entire earth, saturating it, soak every particle of the earth with this golden divine light. So be it. Now gently lower your hands on your lap. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Just be still. Now just imagine a beautiful golden flame floating a few inches above your head. Just be still. Be aware of the love within your heart. Allow that loving energy from your heart to float up, up to your throat. Up, up to the center of your head. Be still. Allow that golden light to gently float up to the top of your head and into that golden flame now. Just imagine your entire body, your emotions, your thought, every particle of you is now entering that golden flame above your head. And stay there. Be still. Your entire awareness has just melted into that golden light. Be still. Be aware of that silence. Be aware of the inner peace of that beautiful golden light. Om. Just allow your attention to just gently and naturally drift deeper and deeper into that golden light. that light, simultaneously be aware of the inner stillness, the inner peace, and just allow yourself to gently drift deeper and deeper into that ocean of light, that ocean of divine love. Now, let go, let go, and just let things be. Gently, 
very slowly. Come back to your physical body. Gently move your fingers, move your toes. Raise your hands again in blessing. First, bless the people you love, your friends, your loved ones. Fill them with golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, with happiness, with abundance and prosperity and spirituality. So be it. May all be blessed with peace, with love, and with joy. So be it. May all be blessed with healing, guidance, help, and protection. Now, bless the earth below us. Imagine golden light going down to the earth. Repeat after me. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth and all her ch children be blessed, be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. So be it. Blessings be to all, without exception. Let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Divine Mother. We thank you. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. We thank you. Personally, to my teacher, Master Sohok Sri Maha thank you. In full faith, so be it. All right. Uh, I kind of got carried away. That went a little deeper than I expected, but I hope you guys liked it. I just asked. After we're done, you get up and do some exercising. Otherwise, some of you are like, oh, that was pretty intense. Anyway, um, thank you for joining me. Today's Wednesday, I hope. Yeah, I think it's Wednesday. So Friday, we're uh, continuing with uh, <laughs> Anchor the Light. And a lot of people have asked for it. So we're going to focus Friday for emotional healing. All right? And yesterday was supposed to be the full one-hour uh, deep emotional healing able to do because <laughs> there were so many projects that we have to do so that's going to be Sunday instead okay let me clarify so on Friday just like we do uh, the 10 the 10 o'clock and the 6 o'clock we're going to do our meditation and we're going to include some meditation that will go into emotional cleansing on Sunday and I'll put the information here we're going to do a deep emotional healing that's for a whole hour I say just shoveling <laughs> okay, I call it deep emotional excavation, and if you can, that's 11 a.m. PDT specific daylight saving time, California time, Sunday, August 23. If you go to masterco.org and register, it's not going to be for everyone because, you know, if you don't register, I have no idea who's watching. If it's too much and I have to hold back, you know, I want really want to give you the best I can. So if you don't mind, just go to masterco.org, just register to be on the mailing list. So when we send out the uh, Invitation. It's going to be a specific website. You can register and everything so you can join in. All right. So that's going to be this Sunday. Um, I think that's pretty much, much it. See if I missed something. Okay. So Sunday is the full hour of uh, deep emotional healing. This Friday, we're going to do um, emotional healing as part of the meditation, just like we did today, but we're going to focus more on emotional cleansing. And September 12, 13 would be this class. Okay. One thing I like about this class is we're going to do about, depends on your receptivity, about 10 meditations that day, th those two days. And, you know, it's funny, you have these virtues. The last one is called moderation, non-excessiveness. Somehow, I don't get there. <laughs> so when it comes to teaching class, I always overdo it. If you've been with me last time and uh, last few times with Achieving Oneness, uh, this one even more. If you think that was intense, this is even more intense because we go to chakra by chakra and really go, <clears throat> <laughs> All right. Anyway, so if you can try to get the book so you can read it, it's it's amazing. I'll cover some of it along the way, and next time when we talk about the three wills, we'll actually practice it: how to transform, transmute anger, resentment into higher will, and then spiritual will. All right. I think uh, that should be good for today. I hope um, I covered everything. All right. <laughs> So if you don't mind, just leave me some comments. I always like, love hearing from you. And some people ask, you know, can we contribute to your ministry? You're not charging us for everything. There's a donate button somewhere. Press it and give whatever you want. May you be richly blessed for your generosity. Okay? I think that's it. Namaste, everyone. We wish you much happiness. And, of course, we'll leave this meditation and this... Uh, so you guys can go back to it. Tell your friends and loved ones. And practice that way you kind of pull them into the spiritual path this is a perfect time to do it 
to be able to neutralize a lot of the fear, a lot of the stuff that's flying around, you know, get your, get your spiritual core strong so the certainty is in you. Make sense? You know, that's one of the reasons why people have stress. They don't have certainty. They read the news, they talk to people. You know, sometimes you hear this, sometimes you say, you want something that is certain. And that certain is something that is permanent within you, that is your spiritual nature. All right? Namaste. You all take care. God bless. And the information is there. By the way, uh, the bookstore is also there. So if you want to get the book, if you don't want to, that's fine, whatever. Uh, that way you can read up on it and we can cover a lot more of it. Namaste. Bye. Take care. Live super energized. Okay, let me turn this off.